Today, we're making this backdrop for webcasting, telecasting, teleconferencing. If you're like a lot of people, you see a lot of things going on behind them, and wouldn't it be nice just to have a nice plain surface to block and diffuse light so that you can look your best. About $12 worth of PVC pipe and connectors, the cost of a curtain, in this case $24, and you can solve your problems. Then I'll show you how to customize it to give it your own personal style. Interested? Here we go. This is an exploded view of the build. It's all driven by these curtain panels. The dimensions of the curtains are 52 inches wide and six feet tall. And the cost of those is around $24. This is kind of a middle range, nice curtain. You could go up, you could go down, and that certainly would drive how expensive the build is. The vertical posts are 70 inches, two inches shy of six feet. And the reason why is because you need some room for the connectors. These two posts are five feet. You could certainly make them longer, six, seven feet. You have teeth at the bottom of the panel to connect a one foot extension. We used two originally, got it up to about eight feet. We thought it was a little too high, so we brought it down. These originally were two feet a piece on the base, and we got them down to one. The reason why two feet on either side of the T seemed to be a little too much. The bases are T's and two end connectors, and those are one foot a piece. This arrangement, the way you see it now, can be built with three 10 foot long, three quarter inch PVC pipes. If you wanted to make it wider, then it would be four PVC pipes. And the difference in the build is about $2.50 because the pipes in our area cost about $2.50 for a 10 footer. This was specifically designed to be easy to put together so that you can take it apart when you don't need it or you want to move it to another site. It assembles in minutes. First thing we're going to do is put bottom supports together. Although not required, sometimes a mallet is helpful in putting this PVC together if you're not going to glue it. Some pipes will have lettering on it, and so if you want that to not be an issue, put it on the bottom or away from where you plan to use the camera so that no one will see it. Now that the base is done, it's time to make the frame. I've marked the center of the horizontal poles to give me a guide when I put the curtains on. I'm going to take both sides of the curtains. There's this kind of treatment, which you certainly could use, but I'm going to run the PVC all the way through the top here. It doesn't matter which way you go. Now I'm not too worried about this lettering, obviously, because it's going to be covered up. but I do want to make sure that I've got the finished side of the curtain showing towards the camera. I'm scrunching it up to give it plenty of room for the next phase. And I'm just going to put the two elbows on the end. Then I'm going to put the two supports. And this is where you have to be concerned about what's going to show at the camera. Putting the frame together like this is helpful to keep these two guys flat. Now you can either step on it, put it together like this, or pick it up on the side and do it this way. Gonna work on the bottom of the frame. Now you can see this is a little tighter fit on the bottom, but it will definitely go, just take your time and space it out for your line as a guide that you put on before. All right, now that you have the bottom curtain on, I'm just gonna put these on here for T's. And just push down on them. Make sure they're nice and tight. Lay them down and make sure they're nice and flat with each other. And then I'm gonna just take and put these guys in on either side. Okay, I'm pushing down, making sure nice everything's nice and tight, which it seems to be nice and square. If you have a friend 
this would be a good time to use them to put the feet on, but I'm gonna show it worst case where you don't have anybody around, so you're gonna to have to put it up yourself. So you take your feet, and just push them on. Leaning up against the wall helps. And if it comes apart like that, no big deal. You're just gonna have to put it back together. If for some reason you're having problems putting it together, just push it up against the wall and then just use the wall for leverage. And there you go. So here's your seven foot frame. Pretty easy to move around. Looking for my line so I can center up the curtain on both ends. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around the edge like that on the top. Imagine that this door here was a window instead. You like the light, but you want to diffuse it a little bit. You can push this up right against the wall. Take off one side and just use the L. By the way, if you're having problems taking off a fitting after putting it on so hard. This mount works great. I just put on a spare piece of staff a couple times, it comes right off. This is five feet, but I decided to take it seven. And the reason why is because we re did a reassessment of the space that we were trying to cover with the backdrop. And five feet will work for most people with most of the video cameras that you put on top of your laptops, what have you but we just wanted a little more space. So comparison, five feet of screen, seven feet wide screen. You decide which one you want. Either of these will work with this design in this curtain here that I've got posted below. You can also add some pizzazz, some little style points here. And that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna make this backdrop and curtain your own customized, personalized space. I'm gonna show you a couple of different options to add a little pizzazz to your background. Here's just a banner I've made previously. It's using an old curtain rod, and this is a Hogwarts banner. You can imagine that's for Harry Potter fans. And I have just some black paracord here, tied off simply with some half hitches. And then I'm gonna make a little holder here with a little S holder with a hook. And you just put that on, you know, and it works great. You don't want anything really, really heavy, but you could certainly use any of these options. Okay, maybe you're a big bike fan and you wanna take one of your more colorful bike jerseys. You could do the same thing, just hang it on a hanger like this and it will work great. One of my customers in the family wanted to put the banner up. It, it would be easy to hold it, hang it like this, but they wanted it to be vertical. So what I did is I have a hook with some white paracord. Now you can use white paracord. I have a whole bunch of different scrap lengths here. You could use just regular white twine, anything that's gonna blend in with the background. I made a frame out of, this is 16 gauge wire you can get this for a couple bucks at any craft store or even big box store so 16 gauge wire and then i just masking taped it down to give it some rigidity because otherwise it just kind of doesn't look just right and then i cut another piece of wire and put some loops on it i used a little cable tie to connect those two together and then on the bottom, you have two options, and I'll show you both of them. One is kind of like a counterweight. Here I just took some clevis pins. When I hang it, it's kind of down at an angle, and if you don't care about that, then you're good to go. But my customer wanted it like this, you know, almost flying, and so that's what I've tried to achieve. The other option is maybe a little easier. You take another piece of paracord, and then another hook, and I'll show you how to make this hook in, in just a minute or so. And then I've got a little bit of bungee here. 
I'm using the remnants of the shoelace and I've done a valuation of these. I tell you what, we all converted to this. Tying shoes is so <laughs> last century, you know, for sports and all that stuff. So anyway, I uh, had some extra pieces of that line around. So I just put some knots in that, took a little connector at the bottom. And I think that's even better than the weights and keep it in place. Maybe you have a colorful sign, something different and unique that makes your background identifiable to you. I'll show you how to build one for a sports banner. So what I did is I just took a one quarter inch dowel. This happened to be a yard long. I cut off six inches off the end so the dowel itself is 30 inches long and that's just perfect for this banner. And then I just took some beads. You don't have to do this. If you don't have the beads, you can just certainly tie the cord directly to the dowel and you'll be fine. But something lightweight, not real heavy. The hole was really close to a quarter inch, but I took a drill and just drilled it out. Just pushed them on the ends and they're pretty tight. You don't even have to glue them. So you run that through your flag and you're going to make two of these little hooks right here. They're pretty easy to make. So they're going to take out a, a length of, I think it's about eight inches, eight to nine inches. You're going to make the smaller one. If you're going to make the bigger one, that's about 12 to 15 inches. You need to leave a little bit of extra room for the top and the bottom. And then you just take and run it around like that. And then you take a piece of your leftover three quarter inch pipe. And then this one, I'm just gonna finish off. It's gonna be a little longer, kind of in the spirit of this one. So maybe, uh, you know, if you're gonna make one of these shorter ones, I think maybe five inches. And then you just give it another little loop like this and you're done. And then that becomes your hanger. This goes around the top loop like that. And then this is what you hang your cord on or case of the bike jersey you could just kind of loop it up a little more like that and it will work great and you want it to make sure it's nice and flat all in alignment there I've decided I want this thing to hang 11 inches down from the top of the curtain and you can see I've got a little bit of space on either side and that's good that's exactly what I want so 30 inches I think these beads are about three quarters of an inches long so that gives me about a quarter inch on either side to tie the cable to and so I've got two 20 inch long pieces of paracord and if you cut this off I just kind of hit them with some fire scarecrow and just so that they don't fray you don't wouldn't have to do that with the twine obviously and then I come in here and I'm going to do bowline knots so I did a quick review of the, of the video and there's absolutely no way you're going to see this so I'm going to expand the view of the bullion knot because I'm using that across all of these visual banners and what have you. It's called the wrap in the hole thing. So you take and you make yourself a tree with a rabbit. That's the rabbit's hole. This is the tree. And then this is the loop here. So just imagine if that's the loop, you come around here. The rabbit comes out of the hole, it goes around the tree, and comes back in the hole. And that, my friends, is the bowling knot. It's that simple, it's that tight, and the great thing about it, it's easy to adjust. You just back it off like this, and it comes right apart. While I'm sailing and climbing, I use bowlings all the time. So that's just kind of a go-to knot for me. So there you go. That's how you do a bowling knot. So we've already done one here, and you can see they don't have much tail. The tail is the extra cord that's left over after you tie the knot. Okay, so I've got my two top hooks all done here, and I'm still trying to get this thing to be the same length on both sides. Now here, you can use a bowling knot, and I just told you I did everything else by the bowling knot. Or you can use two half hitches, or there we go. And I've looped it around once and then just locked it in with two half hitches. 
and you can push that all the way to the end and then just do the same thing on the other side so let me show you how I did this just loop it around a couple times and you might have to adjust this knot just to make sure it's even on both ends because you want your banner to hang even right so now it's just a matter of taking all these things that we've made and putting them on the backdrop, put them in place. And this is how this bungee banner goes on. Pretty easy. I was having problems with this. See how it's swinging out a little bit? So all I did is take a little magnet and put it on the other end and that keeps it right up against the curtain. Works out great. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. Thanks for watching. And if you're interested in these kind of things, Check out my channel and please subscribe. I'm very curious to see what other people are going to come up with on this design.